What's up, guys? My name is Marcus Huskins, and thank you for joining me. As always, if you're finding this content useful, please go ahead, do me a favor, and hit that subscribe button. Now, moving right along, we're going to pick up from where we left off in last week's video, which is exporting an AAF from Pro Tools so that it could be opened as a Studio One session. And again, if you haven't watched that, I'll go ahead and provide a link somewhere in this video or in the description. But the main benefit with that is that we can maintain any edit boundaries and we can further edit in Studio One. We don't have to commit to consolidating all of our audio and then find out down the line, oh man, I cut right into that word. I didn't notice that was a bad edit. Okay, so as I mentioned last week, the one thing that AAF kind of leaves out with respect to music is, although it works great for bringing things in, one thing that we're left missing, though, is with respect to any tempo maps or time signature changes or markers, anything like that, that information is really useful. It does not come across. There's no way for that to be carried over. So let's go ahead and let's hop into Pro Tools. I've made a couple changes with this Pro Tools session from the one that we used in the last video, but they're pretty much just visual and some of them are arbitrary. So if you'll notice over here, I've added some markers. So if I go ahead, I've got my intro, I've got a verse 1A, and then I've got a verse 1B. So this is just indicating that there's some markers there. In addition to that, you'll also notice that I've added some tempo changes. Again, these are just for demonstration purposes. They're not necessarily have any context to the music in terms of what we're listening to. But we've got a tempo change over here where this changes is 75 BPM. In addition, we also have a time signature change. This is something that's really important. When people talk about tempo maps, quite often they just talk about a tempo or tempo changes, but both of these are very important. Now, in addition, I've also made another one over here. Let me just take my grid snapping off. You'll notice that we're at 60 BPM, we're back to 4.4. Here we are at 120 BPM. So if I hover my cursor here and you'll see I've changed it to 6.8. And then back at this point, we go to 60 BPM, back to 4.4. And then if we scroll down a little bit further, we return back to our 68 BPM at 4.4. So like I said, these are just completely arbitrary, but it's not the point. I just want to show you how this workflow works. All right, so in order to do this, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a new track and I'm going to add one MIDI track. And essentially, that's all we have to do, regardless of whether there's any information on it. Then we have the option to export MIDI. So here, I'm going to leave this set as it is. And in this particular situation, I just want to give this a name. So I could say tempo map from Pro Tools. And obviously I would put this somewhere that you would know where it is. You know what, in all honesty, if I was doing this, I would do these two steps in one. I would export an AAF and then in the same assets folder that I'm putting the AAF, I would also export my MIDI tempo map. So let's go ahead and do that. Now we hop back over to Studio One. Now in Studio One, you'll notice over here, I've got my marker track, arranger track, and tempo track open. The tempo defaulted to 120 BPM when I imported the AAF. The other thing that's important to point out is, and I think this is really good default behavior, is by default, when you import an AAF, Studio One will set your tempo on those tracks to don't follow. Now, this is really beneficial and useful because that means that if I adjust my tempo, you'll notice that I'm not losing any of my edits. If these were set to something different, like for example, if they were set to time stretch or follow, and I started adjusting, you'll notice that all of my edits are gonna to go totally out of whack. So that's not something that we want. So we'll go ahead and let's reset this to 120 BPM and we'll set this to don't follow. But like I said, this should happen by default. The minute you open up an AAF, those tracks should be set to don't follow. So now for the useful part, now that we've exported that MIDI file from Pro Tools, which has our tempo map, that's gonna give us information that we need to happen in this song. Now in previous versions before four, this was a little bit convoluted, but it's become a lot more simple now that we can import song data from another song into our existing song. So in order to do this, I'm gonna go back to my start menu over here and I'm gonna open up a finder window. Let's go ahead and we need to navigate to the spot where that MIDI file was that we exported. So I'm gonna to go to my documents, my Pro Tools session and over here. Now I have this MIDI file and I've named it accordingly, Temple Map from Pro Tools. Let's go ahead and drag it here and we'll go ahead and click no. 
Studio One is automatically going to create a new session or rather a new song from that MIDI file. A couple things to take into consideration here is that this is the best way to work if you want everything to come over. So if I go ahead, I open up my marker track and if I go ahead and open up my tempo track over here, you'll notice that if I zoom out, everything came over from Pro Tools. And it's kind of hard to see this. Studio One automatically adds a start marker. But if I move this away, you'll notice that our intro marker came over from Pro Tools. In addition, all of those arbitrary tempo changes and time signature changes that I created in Pro Tools, they came over as well. Okay, so now similar to the way that if you drag an AAF file that Studio One opens a song but it's not yet saved, that's very similar to what happens with MIDI. So the minute I drag that MIDI file in, it's open the MIDI file and, and we have a song name over here but it's actually not saved. So what I wanna do is I wanna save this song, right? But I wanna, for example, save to a new folder because I need to put this somewhere that's useful to me. So I'm gonna to navigate to that same song folder we have. So I believe it was PTAF imported. Now this is just going to add the Studio One song. It's not gonna create a media folder or a cache folder. So I'm okay with it existing in the same song folder. If I wanted, I could you know, add another folder and I could just call this, you know, for example, tempo map from Pro Tools. Go ahead and just copy this, create that folder. It automatically has the same name. We'll go ahead now and push save. So now that this is saved as an existing song, I'm not gonna worry about anything anymore. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna close this. And now we're back to our original song over here. Now, one thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna change my audio interface so that we can hear our audio playback as it's happening. We'll go ahead and click okay. Now, the next thing I need to do is essentially, I just wanna import that tempo map and anything that came from the song that I just created. So we're gonna to go to song, we're gonna import song data. We need to navigate to the actual folder where the song exists. So let's go ahead and we're gonna to navigate to this song file, which if you recall, only has this information. This is all I want to come over from this song. Let's go ahead and click okay. And you'll notice that it just went ahead and it imported the markers and it imported, in addition to that, it also imported all of these tempo changes. Now, one thing we can do really quickly, if we wanted to double check these, just make sure. So that all works as expected. Now, the other thing I'm gonna do really quickly over here is let's just redefine our song length. Now, these tempo changes and time signature changes that we added, keep in mind, I added these just to show that they do come over, but they're not necessarily relevant to this song. Okay, so the last thing that I would do in this particular case is I would go ahead and I would highlight all of my markers and I would go ahead and I would create arranger sections from these markers. It's a really cool shortcut that we can do. And in addition to that, we can also do the same over here. I can right click and I can create markers from arranger sections. So if we've already gone ahead and done the work in, for example, Pro Tools, and we have those marker tracks, we have our tempo changes, anything to do with the tempo map, that's a really quick and easy way to do that, is just export a MIDI file, drag the MIDI file into Studio One, save it as a new song, and then use import song data to import that MIDI file into your existing song. And like I mentioned, the benefit here is that the time stretch mode is set to don't follow, so that if we import a tempo map and it changes the BPM and anything to do with our song, then we don't have to worry about any of our audio moving around. And of course, the last step to this workflow would be if you really wanted to maximize this, we could go ahead now, because this is a static tempo, all of these audio files, I could go ahead and let's just highlight the selected tracks, all of the audio events, and I could set the actual tempo. So where it says file tempo not set, I could say, right, that's 68. And then if I did want to make any changes to the tempo, I could simply set this to time stretch. And then if we, for example, bump this up a little bit, let's go ahead and move everything. We just moved our tempo up to, you know, 97. And of course, everything would follow suit. So that's a kind of like a, you know, a round trip workflow in getting everything to work in terms of using AAFs in Pro Tools to get your basic audio events over to Studio One. But then the last step is exporting that tempo map and importing the tempo map into your existing song. And then at this point, of course, we could go ahead and start using some of the arranger track tools that we have in Studio One that are very unique to Studio One. And we could go ahead and start doing any editing that we want to do within Studio One. 
So that's all the time I have available today. And again, if you are enjoying this content, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button, like, share, and as always, we'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.